I'm, I'm a writer and I'm now working on a novel. So the novel is called um, The Sweet Promise of Bullshit. <laughs> that is the title. And uh, it features three women, um, Mina, Keisha Ann, and Nora. So Mina is Ghanaian, Keisha Ann is African American, and Nora is white American. And it's these three women who are going on a trip. It starts off in New York, they'll go to London, then to Ghana, and then back to New York. And it's really about the challenges that arise when you travel and you learn about different parts of people that you didn't expect. But it's also about being confronted with your own past and your relationship to that past. And I'm particularly interested in how we deal with our legacies of untreated trauma and how they shape our relationships today with ourselves, with how we work, with who we work with. Um, and I think that they, it, it manifests in all kinds of ways. I think it's, I think when, especially when it comes to women, we obsess too much about liking other women and likability and whether or not people like me. I think we obsess about it too much. I think honesty is much harder than likability. And honesty, especially emotional honesty, is an important quality that allows for you to be successful. Um, and so, especially as I've got older, I, I just think less about those things. And so with these women and these characters, who are women that I have known in the years that I've worked. So I've been a journalist for um, almost 20 years now, and I've worked in London and New York and across Africa. Uh, emotional justice comes from initially a personal place of just dealing with my own um, trauma from um, being in a family where my father was an Nkrumah's government and my family lived through the military coups and it was devastating. And um, what I remember most is the, the cancer of silence where there's been trauma. So no one is talking about how traumatic it's been. You just, there's just all this energy around. So I have no memory of the first coup that we lived through, but it was very violent. Soldiers broke into our house, smashed everything. They put a gun to my mother's head. Um, my sisters, we were there in the house. And I have no memory of the actual event. So what I've told you is all that my mother told me, but like 30 years after the event. Um, but what I remembered was the legacy of the terror. So being terrorized in a place that's supposed to be home. It was a very weird feeling and it went on with me for years. And I remember thinking, you know, you can, I'm an educated person, I went to school, I went to university. You can get as educated as you want. But the traumas that impact you in childhood can derail whatever promise you have in adulthood unless at some point you deal with them. I, am, I love, love, love journalism. I am really passionate about the media. Journalism for me was definitely about storytelling. And storytelling was about giving voice to silence. It was really very simple. Often when you ask a question, before someone answers, they pause. And for me, journalism was about the truth lives in the pause. It doesn't live in the question, it doesn't live in the answer. The truth normally lives in the pause. The silence is where we carry the reality of how we feel. The first challenge was dealing with the creativity. And then the second challenge was um, navigating my fear and insecurity as a woman in a profession where the things that I wanted to do and where I wanted to work was very male. It was very, very male. And um, you were always told that do specific things. So either you're gonna be a print journalist or you're going to do radio or you're going to do TV. But I met particularly men who did all three and I wanted to do all three. And I was always being told, well, no, you have to pick one. And I remember working in teams where the guy who was doing the, who was the reporter did wrote and he did radio and I would see him on TV and I said, but if, but he's doing all these different things. He's doing radio, he's doing TV, he's doing. Um, and so I was, I just thought this is it's unfair. Um, and I was stopped from then wanting to explore other areas because you're in this particular limited space. So negotiating um, what others told me I could and couldn't do 
and then dealing with my insecurity. And the thing that I learned about growth was being willing to be wrong, being willing to be told that you're wrong and being willing to learn the lesson. And I think it's important to stay a student of what you do um, in order not to gain the kind of arrogance that will allow you to make mistakes because you think you're too big to learn. So be thoughtful about when you speak, how long you speak for and what you say. My philosophy with journalism and Ghana is really simple. Build what you can with what you have where you are. If you think you need everything to be perfect and amazing before you build, you'll never progress. What has been exciting is to come home, is to bring my radio show The Spin, and The Spin is a globally syndicated weekly one-hour radio show. And the thing that is important about The Spin is that I wanted to do with one radio show what all the big networks do with their content. So what CNN does, what BBC does, and I do both radio and TV. And so what I wanted to do was say that what these big networks do is they take stories and they bring a certain quality, professionalism and excellence to those stories, to that craft. And then they invite the global market to listen to their work. And I said, I want to do the same thing, but I want it to be led by black women. I want it to have a really good gender balance and I want it to be really high quality. And I want to do it with an African centered perspective but have it be in the States and be in Ghana. So the show was the first piece of content that reflected that vision. And so for me, what is exciting is to do, to do two things. Create global content, bring it home and put it on air, but also look at building local content at a really high standard to also play it in a global space, in a global market. Your passion and your commitment are resources. You, your human being self, is a resource. So what you have to first understand is your first resource is yourself. Your second resource is your creativity and your third resource is, is commitment. Success requires you to be creative about your path and in being creative you will find resolution. I always wanted to be a dancer on Broadway. <laughs> I might be addicted to jollof with really good shito and pepper chicken. But then again, I really love palm soup and fufu, but only if my mother makes it. And then I think I might die if I don't eat kelewele on a daily basis. <laughs> That's why I go running all the time, because I want to stay slim. <laughs> I love sakodie. I do not speak chui. My chui is terrible, and I keep saying I'm going to learn. And so I'm learning, I try, but I'm really horrible. So I don't understand even what he says, I understand it in pieces. But I think his musicality with language is genius. I love Gus Miller. <laughs> I really love Gus Miller. I can take shutter in small doses, but I love dancehall, like I love reggae. I always think of my dad when I think of high life, like the old traditional high life, because my dad, who cannot really play the piano, but loved the piano, he could play like one track. That's the one thing he would play all the time. And so I think of him and I love my, da my dad, God rest his soul. So I love that because it, I associate it with him. First, understand that you are your first, best and last resource. So take care of yourself. If you are not well, you cannot work and you definitely cannot succeed. You're Emotional, physical, psychological well-being is necessary in order for you to enjoy any level of success. You are your first, best and last resource. Second is, live with fear. People always talk about being fearless. People always talk about um, get over the fear and do it anyway. What I've learned is, I don't know that you always get over the fear. I think you can learn to manage it. You can learn to negotiate with it in order to do what you need to do. And then you'll get scared by something else. And it's okay. So I think it's okay to be scared. It is not okay to let the fear paralyze you, which it can do. It's not okay to let the fear be the reason why you either act or don't act. Celebrate every small step. Because in order to get to whatever people define as successful, there was a gazillion small steps that nobody but maybe you and your mother or you and your 
boyfriend or you and your child or you and your best friends, you were the only ones who ever saw. But take a moment and celebrate. I'm a big celebrator. With a smile? Okay. I'm Esther Amma and I am a game changer. <laughs>